There was a time when the world of martial arts revolved around Japan. That's because many of the world's combative sports have their roots there. K1, once the world's dominant standing combat sport, was born of the Japanese martial art of karate. While Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, a linchpin of the modern grappling game, also has its origins in traditional Japanese martial arts. Theories abound as to the real roots of MMA. But before UFC gained its toehold as a sport, Japanese MMA had pride. And pride has its roots in the Japanese pro wrestling organization, UWF. These martial sports, born of Japan, stepped out onto the world stage, bringing the masses to a frenzy. But it's high time to bring them home and return Japan to the center stage. It's time to throw off the chokehold MMA has on combat sports. Time to kick things off and reboot the world of fighting. Once again, remember the thrill. Once again, feel the fever of the fight. On September 10th in Yokohama, Japan's going to bring some excitement back to the world of combat sports. Hello, fighting fans from around the world. I'm the voice, Michael Chabello, coming to you from Tokyo, Japan, with a monumental announcement that will shake the combat sports world to its very foundation. You do not want to miss one moment of this historic announcement. As you saw in our opening video, mixed martial arts has become ubiquitous in the combat sports world. But there's an organization who's about to change everything you've come to know, an organization who is going to break down walls, pound on the door, and electrify the world. I'm talking about a reboot of one of the most electrifying, one of the most entertaining fighting franchises in history, along the lines of UFC and Bellator and PFL. And today, at this desk, I'm going to be joined by a slew of celebrity guests who will help us break down and reveal this historic announcement. So stick around and strap yourself in because you do not want to miss one moment as history is about to be made. K1, languishing in limbo since 2010, established a new weight class, adding the lightweight division to the max middleweight division, championed by Masato. In Japan, where there's an abundance of talent in this weight class, many new stars have appeared. And on June 19th, 2022, at the Tokyo Dome, a fight would take place that not only shook the foundations of the fighting world, but would carve a place into combat history. <laughs> Using the momentum from this event, once again, K1 is calling out to the strongest fighters from around the globe to stake their claim on the world battleground. K1 held qualifying tournaments around the world with the rallying cry, all or nothing. And once again, fighters flocked to its banner to revive the days when only the strongest could claim their rightful place. In the past, 
monsters such as Mark Hunt and Badr Hadi in the super heavyweight division, and Buakau and Petrosian in World Max swam from the unknown depths to devour their prey in qualifying rounds. Now the world will shake when new champions emerge and the World Grand Prix Super Heavyweight and World Max Middleweight fighters make their triumphant return to the stage with lightweight classes thrown in the mix. K1 is back. The world's most prestigious stage for combat kicks off in Yokohama. You heard it right. Do not adjust your screens. And wherever you're watching today on the world, certainly you've got to have goosebumps like I do right now. The pinnacle of world striking sports, K1, is back. And September 10 is the date of its rebirth, K1 World Grand Prix, which has not held a significant global event since Alastair Overeem dominated the competition to claim the K1 World Grand Prix Championship belt in 2010, is slated to return. And if that wasn't exciting enough, the brand K1 World Max, which has featured some of the most gifted, technical, cerebral fighters ever in the middleweight division, will also make its glorious return. Wow, can you believe it? K1 World Heavyweight Grand Prix, K1 Max, it's all set to come back. Let's first discuss in detail about the return to K1's roots, K1 Rebirth. And to do so, I want to welcome a couple of very special guests. First of all, I'm pleased to introduce Carlos Kikuta, one of the new frontmen of K1, and also, Tomoha Oki, CEO of M1 Sports Media, which plans and produces 4K1. Carlos Kikuta, thank you so much for joining me. What an exciting announcement. Okay, hello everyone. I'm Carlos Kikuta, the new producer of K1. Starting 2002 to 2010, I was in charge of selling K1 broadcasting rights all over the world. Within Sony and SoftBank, I worked. At that time, the number of countries broadcasting K1 expanded to around 140. And I think I was one who felt closest to the potential of K1 and the power of its content. I have recently been involved to take on the role of new producer, as the new K1 is once again moving forward with its worldwide expansion as it once was. Let me now explain the theme of Rebirth. As you have just seen, the new K1 has created content for the new lightweight division in Japan over the past eight years. And we have set out next roadmap as going global. As was the case with the K1 in the past, we will hold qualifying tournaments not only in Japan, but on the world stage. And the uh, final tournament will be held by the strongest fighters who have won these tournaments. The idea is to reverse the tournament system of these days. We'd like to reverse K1 World Max concept. In the past, only the under 70 kg weight class was considered to be in the max category. From now on, all medium and lightweight classes will be referred as to as K1 World Max. Thank you, Carlos. Oki-san, it's great to have you here today. Could you please introduce yourself for our fans across the world? My name is Oki, representative of M1 Sports Media. I've been working with the new K1 since its inception in 2014, and I've worked closely with many Japanese fighters to build up K1. Thanks to the hard work of the fighters, we've been successful in establishing the right category. This is the beginning of a new chapter in K1's history. I'm very excited to be able to expand K1 to the world market. 
新生 K1 で築き上げた中,中継量級をさらに盛り上げ世界に発信していきたいと思っておりますどうぞよろしくお願いいたします Thank you, Oki san. Carlos, I want to ask how do you plan to separate the management of World Grand Prix and World Max? The World Grand Prix will continue to hold regional qualifiers around the world, and the World Max will mainly be held in Japan, considering the bench strength. Most of the world's best combat athletes these days are in mixed martial arts. Do you think there's any chance that those athletes will compete in K1 in the future, Carlos? Of course, it's possible. In the past, there were many fighters who were active in both MMA and K1, and even MMA fighters have their own personalities, such as uh, some are strong in striking and some are good at grappling. I hope that the K1 stage will become a major attraction as an option for the fighters with strong striking skills. Oki san, during the peak of K1 Max, Uh, it drew a very young audience of both men and women that sold out arenas all over Japan and indeed around the world. Do you believe we will be able to draw that young audience back to the new look K1 Max? We still have many young, talented, energetic fighters. We are confident that these athletes will be able to compete on the world stage. Carlos, when I think back of the heady days of K1 World Grand Prix, I think of names like Bada Hari, Jerome Labana, Peter Ertz, Ernesto Hust, Branko Sikatic, Andy Hook, the list goes on. These were magical days that captured the imagination of fight fans across the world. Can we revisit that magic again? Can K1 be magical like it once was? Well, the, we know the, what it will take to make the K1 miracle happen again. We just need to do it. And we are going to do it. K1 Reboot, the newly reorganized K1, will reboot on September 10 at the Yokohama Arena here in Tokyo, Japan. It will feature some of the fiercest warriors gathered from partner organizations around the planet. Let's take a look at the details of the upcoming K1 Rebirth taking place once again September 10 here in Tokyo at the Yokohama Arena. On the 10th of September, it's going to be a K1 Rebirth at the Yokohama Arena. Eight heavyweight fighters will face off in a brutal, winner takes all, one day tournament. The next generation of super heavyweight fighters vie to see just who will carry the mantle of responsibility for the future of K1. Let's introduce to you now these potential powerhouses put forth by K1 partner organizations. From the Lithuanian kickboxing organization KOK, heavyweight champion Mikhail Turinsky joins the fray. He's won many a battle with cunning combinations. And always keeps opponents guessing where his feet will land next. This tough Polish contender aims to use his vast experience and tricky offensive game to take home the victory. Ariel Machano from the Brazilian kickboxing organization WGP. A hyper aggressive fighter who is constantly bringing the fight to his opponents. With his impressive physical prowess, this power fighter has littered the canvas with his fallen foes. From the WLF kickboxing organization, Liu Tsa from China. Traditional martial arts in China have thousands of years of history. This new star of the Chinese kickboxing world is a powerful Sanda fighter, following in the footsteps of this tradition. Representing his homeland, China, he makes his entry into striking sport, aiming to add his name to history. From the Romanian kickboxing organization DFS comes Valentin the Gunman Bordianu. This do or die hitman is always aiming to finish his opponents. While in Moscow in 2018, this fighting ace from the Romanian Kick Kingdom defeated none other than the Red Scorpion, Alexei Ignashov. 
Mahmoud Satari of Iran, winner of the K1 2022 World Grand Prix Super Heavyweight Tournament. Though a cruiserweight, this strong rusher has scored a number of shocking KOs with his hard-hitting style. Based in Japan, he's familiar with the World Grand Prix system and is one of the favorites to win this year's tournament, having won titles with various organizations such as M1 and Crush. What's more, many talented fighters from around the world who have long dreamt of this day have answered the clarion call of K1's revival. Will we see new stars follow in the footsteps of former K1 greats? The one-day event will also see the return of fighters from the middle and lightweight divisions who have upheld the K1 name in Japan. There are also plans to hold a K1 World Max one-match bout. As reported, Akihiro Kaneko and Masashi Kumura will meet for a K1 World Max special bout. The rivals last faced off in the final round of the third Super Bantamweight Championship Tournament. Kaneko got his revenge in a decision victory after a hotly contested battle, and in doing so, became K1's third Super Bantamweight Champion. With one win and one loss apiece, who will walk out on top when the two meet again after 18 months? With an eye on future world tournaments in 2024 and beyond, the opening chapter of Max is about to begin. Whoa, can you believe it? If this is a dream, please do not wake me. I can't believe that K1 is coming back on a global stage. In 1993, 30 years ago, the year K1 was born and Branko Sikatik, a complete dark horse at the time, became the first K1 champion in history. A shocking turn of events for many people worldwide. But it was the excitement of never knowing who would win that gave K1 a reputation for unpredictability and was one of the reasons why K1 had such a meteoric rise in popularity. The eight participants who will be announced for the tournament today are perhaps relatively unknown in their own right. Carlos, could you tell us your thought process in selecting these competitors for September 10? Um, with the lack of talent in the heavyweight division worldwide, I think they are gems and strong fighters who have yet to be introduced to the world. With this in mind, we asked for partner organizations around the world to recommend fighters suitable for the K1 rules. Even within the same striking discipline, each organization has different rules for Muay Thai, or karate, and even kickboxing. We have chosen fighters who can adapt to the K1 rules and fight aggressive. Some of the most aggressive fighters in the world come from Europe. And that's where we're going to go right now. We're about to connect online with Donatus Simonetes of King of Kings, KOK, an organization based in Lithuania. There he is, Donatus, my old friend. It's so good to see you. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Donatus. It is wonderful to be here with you. Thank you for talking to us today. What are your thoughts on K1 Rebirth, Donatus? Because we are all so excited for it. We are very happy because it's come, uh, K1 has come back. This is big news for all world because is, uh, we are working a long time with K1. Then uh, this is stopping K1, is KOK uh, uh, starting work very hard and now is KOK in biggest promotion in the Europe. And we uh, is very happy for cooperation and uh, we have is, uh, uh, many divisions, many good fighters and we're doing 12 events per year in uh, every Euro countries. And we're very happy and uh, we will see in K1 ring is best uh, KOK fighters. Donatus, what are your expectations for K1's comeback worldwide? 
And uh, this is very, very, like I said, it is very big news because is, everybody knows it is for kickboxing. K1 is number one in the world. And uh, everybody is long time is waiting. This is comeback. This is big comeback. And uh, everybody waiting now September 10th. And uh, we will see this big uh, comeback in the world. What type of cooperation can KOK offer to K1 in the future? In, uh, of course, we, we uh, like and we're very happy is for cooperation with K1 and uh, we're doing this, uh, one, like one or two tournaments in, uh, together with K1 in Europe. And uh, we have this good, uh, for everybody is good uh, and best fighters for every Europe. Well, we have this long list because we have this, uh, like I said, it's 12 events per year and we have these different countries. We have a lot of strong fighters from Germany, from, um, from Poland, from uh, Lithuania, from Finland. We have this now in my in the KOK division with uh, champion from Finland. We have champions from uh, UK. We, we have a lot of strong, many strong fighters and uh, everybody see in the uh, strongest fighters KOK who champions is coming to K, 2K1 ring and we will see. Donatus, it's been such a pleasure to talk to you today. It's wonderful to see you. Before I let you go, could you give one final message to all the K1 fans around the world? Thank you very much again for Carlos. Thank you very much for big cooperation with uh, KOK with uh, K1. And uh, good luck for everybody in CU in September 10th. There he is. Thank you very much, Donatus Simonitis, coming to us live from Lithuania. And again, the first of the reborn Okisan. I understand there's going to be a one-off match in the middleweight division, K1 Max. Can you give the viewers your thoughts on what they have to look forward to? Hi. We currently have a title match between Akihiro Kaneko and Masashikumura in the Super Bantamweight division. Please pay attention to the dramatic rivalry between the two fighters. It's the third time the two fighters will face each other, and right now they're tied at one win, one loss apiece. The two have always been aware of each other and are determined not to lose, both in terms of results and content. I'm sure the enthusiasm that they have for this decisive match will reach people overseas who are watching them for the first time. So please enjoy the show. Thank you, Okisan. There is nothing like a war to settle the score. And that is what we are going to get September 10 at the Yokohama Arena. K1 Rebirth, the most dynamic striking sport in history, is set to breathe new life with plans to continue the action in fights beyond September 2023. K1 will seek to expand globally with partner organisations around the world. Let's take a close look now at what excitement is in store for you. The rebirth of K1. Once again, a new generation of super heavyweight fighters will take the world by storm in the K1 World Grand Prix. K1 World Max also returns to the mix as the middleweight and lightweight fighters also take to the world stage. Both WGP and MAX are planning to hold qualifiers around the world, starting in 2024. Only the world's best, who make it through the grueling qualifying rounds, can compete in a once-a-year tournament for a shot at the title of world number one. As K1 partners with affiliated striking organizations around the world, there's another powerful organization forming a business alliance with K1. The strongest karate, Chokushin Kai Khan. The influence of Chokushin Karate on K1 is immeasurable. The striking rules established by the famous bull killer, Master Masoyama, have created countless legends. Many of his apprentices would go on to open dojos in the US and Europe, laying the foundation for what would later become kickboxing, with scores of his fighting progeny 
joining the ranks of K-1. And today, the organization Chokushin Kaikan, whose students from all over the world practice the strongest karate, has decided to join forces with K-1. I still can't believe it's happening. As the Pointer Sisters once sang, I'm so excited and I just can't hide it. Carlos, I want to ask you, I understand you've partnered with martial arts organizations around the world and have qualifying rounds planned for next year. What expectations do you have for your partner organizations? Um, while K1 previously held back on the global front, there is no denying that the best heavyweight fighters on the world felt the draw of MMA. Our task is to promote the appeal of K1 not only to customers, but to fighters, to discover and to develop strong fighters, and to create a high-level fighting arena for striking. For this purpose, we'd like to receive greater cooperation from martial arts organizations around the world. Among these organizations, we are particularly looking forward to Kyokushin Karate, the strongest karate on earth, led by Matsui Kanjo. I'll tell you what, folks, a few moments ago when our next special guest walked in the studio, the energy in the entire room changed. It elevated. There was a flutter of excitement. I want to welcome now to the studio Kanjo Matsui, the president of international karate organization IKO, Kyokushin Kaikan, the strongest karate on earth. Matsui Kancho, welcome. It is great to have you here, sir. We are honored by your presence. Could you please tell us about K1 and Kyokushin's partnership? We are pleased to announce that K1 and Kyokushin Kaikan will once again be officially affiliated with each other. I say again, because Kyokushin Kaikan and K1 used to have a partnership, and many Kyokushin Kaikan fighters were active in K1 in the past. I am very much looking forward to the opportunity to have our fighters participate again. I hope that we can have a good exchange in terms of organization, human resources and techniques, and that we will be able to mutually develop and evolve. I look forward to working closely in the future. Matsui Kancho, can you please tell me about the decision to allow Kyokushin fighters to compete in K1? Kyokushin Kaikan will celebrate its 60th anniversary next year, and in our 60 years of international activities, we have people of all nationalities, races, and ethnicities, as well as men and women of all ages. Among them, there are several, I might say many, competitive athletes. Young athletes who want to pursue their own potential. I think that K1 is a place for fighters to pursue their personal potential and a stage where they can gain experience. One of the benefits of groups is what one person has experienced can be shared with the group. One person can indirectly experience what another person has experienced. One can pass learning on to peers, thereby raising the level of the group as a whole. We have experienced this in the past, and in anticipation of this, we have decided to allow our practitioners to participate in K1 after putting in place certain regulations. Carlos, I think back to the great K1 fighters of the past who came from Kyokushin, the likes of Andy Hoog, Slamam Sam Greco, Francisco Filio. What does K1 hope 
from the new generation of Kyokushin Karateka who will compete in the new Reborn K1? Um, more than anything, they have a great squat depth and their strong bodies and heart. Strength of coaching staff, ease of transition from full contact to K1, the number of notable fighters who have already taken part. We look forward to seeing heavyweight international fighters in action. And we are sincerely happy about the partnership. With this impressive lineup of athletes around the globe who never give up, our hope is that Kyokushin will lead the competition in the proud dynamic fights on the K1 stage. Kancho Matsui, how do you think Kyokushin fighters will fare on the world stage against kickboxers and fighters from all different styles? Basically, fighting competitions like ours originally had to create rules where there were not for actual combat. The rules were made for convenience so that we could compete. Our Kyokushin rules, which are generally referred to as full contact or riding, are an extension of the rules of other competitions. And designed to be used in actual competitions. Of course, if you want to enter other fighting competitions, you have to be able to apply the rules and methods of those competitions. But we have a track record in the past, especially in fighting combat. So we think that our fighters will be very competitive. Let me tell you, folks, over the years, K1 has had so many Kyokushin Karateka come through with tremendous success, and they will be hard to stop when the Kyokushin Warriors enter the reborn K1 in 2023 and on to 2024. Well, we also have very many more special guests here with us today, and I'd like to introduce some of them now. We are going to gather some of K1's top middleweight and lightweight fighters in Japan. Gentlemen, please. Gather round. Here they are, four of the very best on the planet of K1's top middle and lightweight fighters in Japan. K1 World Max, which once saw the likes of Masato, Petrosian, Andy Sauer, Albert Kraus and Buakau join its ranks, will soon be back in full swing. In the lightweight and middleweight divisions, these fighters and their competitors from all over the world are sharpening their weapons. And they are just itching to compete and see who will become the world's number one fighter in their divisions. Not only do they have the fighting acumen and the will to duke it out to the finish, but they don't disappoint the fans. In the looks department either, ladies, control yourself, please because we're here with our own veritable BTS idol group of striking, of fighting. And now, could each of the fighters please introduce themselves to our fans? Hey, good evening. えこんにちは。え、初代K1バンダムキュチャンピオンのクロダマです。K1でまあ日本のまあ、K1でまあ、日本のまあ、K1チャンピオンですね。まあ、K1チャンピオンですね。まあ、K1チャンピオンですね。
and beat them all. So it looks like it's time to go out into the world and see what kind of competition is out there. I'm going to show everyone that I'm the best there is and become world number one. Hello, I'm Masashi Kumura. I'm fighting in the Super Bantamweight division now. K1 is going to go out into the world. But I don't think anything will change. I'm still the best in the world. I'm very grateful for the opportunity to fight on the best stage in the world and will continue to prove that I'm number one. I'm the only one in this group that doesn't have a belt, but I plan to get mine at Yokohama Arena in September. K1 is the best combat fighting organization in the world, and I, Kumura, plan to carry the mantle of that responsibility in my fights. Thank you. Well, we can't wait. They look like they've just stepped off the catwalk for a Gucci or a Versace parade. But, fellas, could you please hop behind the table? Four of the greatest of Japanese fighters right here. But the big question is, Oki-san, can they do it on a world stage? What are your expectations, Oki-san, of these fighters? All of these fighters have proven themselves here in Japan. And we're looking forward to seeing what kind of results they can get, what kind of action they can create overseas. Carlos, these four men want to shake up the entire world. What are your expectations for K1 Max overseas on the global stage? Um, as you said earlier, they exactly have the potential to get popularity in the West as the fighting BTS. They are the highly talented as athletes, but gain to support of young women as if they were pop idols. I feel that they have the potential to be accepted overseas as new content that transcend to the framework of sport. Matsui Kansho, Kyokushin has many promising fighters in the middleweight division. Wouldn't you agree? And what are your thoughts on the chances of the Kyokushin fighters in the middleweight division in K1 Max. So this that's true. The middleweight division from lightweight to lightweight. Many fighters. And there are many fighters who would like to test themselves on the K1 stage. K1 side, the K1 side, from K1 as well, they, are, uh, they probably have opinions about people that they would like to see on their stage. So we can invite our fighters to their stage if they would like, but there are people we would like to uh, have try their, their luck as well. World beware! Shokushin has put every fighter on the world on notice. They are coming to K1, to K1 Rebirth. It is going to be awesome. There's an explosion of new content just waiting to be unleashed from Japan to the rest of the world. You won't want to miss these developments, so stay tuned for more from K1 Max. As part of the massive event at Yokohama Arena on September 10, the legendary Kazushi Sakuraba will be producing a joint event to go along with K1 Rebirth. It's Quintet, the ultimate grappling sports competition. Just what is Quintet? Well, we've put together this visual digest for your edification, so let's take a look. The number of athletes competing in judo in Japan is said to be 120,000. America's competitive population of wrestling numbers 1 million, whereas the competitive population of Brazilian jiu-jitsu is a whopping 3 million people. In 2018, Quintet was born out of the desire to create a dream stage for such grapplers. Founded by the legend Kazushi Sakuraba, 
Its concept is simple. No striking, no bloodshed. This universal sport can be enjoyed by everyone from children to the elderly. In order to create more thrill in this grappling only battle, the competition was organized into a winner takes all team competition. At the first Las Vegas tournament held five years ago, many people were mesmerized by the impressive exchange of artful joint locks and submission techniques, transforming the less flashy sport of grappling into a crowd-pleasing spectacle and worldwide sport. The continuation of the dream is finally about to begin. More interesting, more exciting than ever before. It's Quintet Renewed. MMA legend Kazushi Sakuraba launched the professional grappling event Quintet in 2018. With no striking and only throws, joint locks, and chokes, Quintet is a tournament where teams of five fighters compete in a winner-take-all team format that aims to stake its claim at the pinnacle of the grappling world. The strongest jiu-jitsu practitioners, MMA fighters, judoka, amateur and professional wrestlers will participate. And because of the large number of competitors spread around the world, the event is sure to attract excitement worldwide among people of all ages and genders. The Quintet Number Series went on hiatus after the Las Vegas event in October 2018 due to the corona pandemic. But it all is about to restart. Quintet 4 will be held at Yokohama Arena on September 10th, the same day as K1 Rebirth. We're pleased to announce the four teams representing the world of grappling, which will compete in the Quintet 4 in the first one-day tournament to be held in five years. First off, there's Team Sakuraba, with Sakuraba, Nakamura, Seda, and returning to Japan for the first time in three years, Haisam Rida. Then, Team 10th Planet, led by Eddie Bravo. Its members are Gio Martinez, Amir Alam, Richie Martinez, PJ Barch, and Kyle Bain. Hello, Eddie Bravo here. I just got word that Quintet is coming back to Japan in a big way in September with a 10th Planet team, a New Wave team, Team Sakuraba, and a Polaris team. We're going for it, man. We got Kyle Bain, Gio Martinez, Boogie Martinez, PJ Barch, and Amir Alam. We're coming to win it. It's gonna be insane. Next, it's Team Polaris, headed by Gregor Gracie. Its lineup includes Gregor Gracie, Santeri Lilius, Owen Livesey, Matej Sazinski, and Owen O'Flanagan. Uh, this time we're bringing five of our best grapplers. We have Gregor Gracie coming back again. He was instrumental in the team the first time round. Uh, we also have Matej Sazinski, who is the current Polaris welterweight champion, very dangerous grappler. Uh, we have Santeri Lilius, one of the best jiu-jitsu guys in Europe. Uh, he recently represented Finland at ADCC at the finals. And we also have Owen O'Flanagan, one of the best grapplers in the UK. Did very well at the ADCC recently. Um, dangerous in all positions, especially on the legs. Uh, and we're coming to win. And lastly, Team New Wave, led by renowned coach John Danaher. The members are Giancarlo Bodoni, Reese Lefevre, Isaac Michel, Placido Santos, and Abraham Lamontagne. In addition, in a special one-match event, Kazushi Sakuraba's eldest son, Taisei Sakuraba, will make his debut as a professional fighter. His opponent is Masato Uchishiba, back-to-back -back gold medalist in the 66 kilogram judo weight class at the Athens and Beijing Olympics. There will also be a single match 
between the strongest female wrestlers on the planet. Hear the world roar during Quintet Restart, the ultimate battle of grappling strategy and technique. You won't want to blink. Quintet returns for the first time in five years on September 10 at the Yokohama Arena here in Tokyo, Japan. It is going to be grappling madness. And I'm joined by the commentator for Quintet, Stuart Fulton. Stuart, great to see you, brother. Man, thank you so much, Michael. It's fantastic to be here, and it's a dream come true to see Quintet back for this historic occasion. Quintet, Stuart, is riotously popular amongst fans worldwide. What is the appeal? What's so special? What's so awesome about Quintet? The mass appeal, Michael. Uh, the appeal of Quintet is the action and the drama, quite simply. Offense and defense in grappling, they happen at a different pace from the striking arts. The drama, it's very organic. It creates itself. Mr. Sakuraba's format uh, is fantastic, absolute genius. Winner stays on, various weight classes going up against each other. You just can't take your eyes off the action. There's a team weight limit, so the strategizing starts there. How do you stack your team of five? With lighter weights, middle weights, heavy weights. You can't have a team of full heavyweights. So there's a lot going on with that also. Then, how do you place them? In order, from the starting man through to the, the last, in order to pose the greatest problem to the opposing team. It really is fascinating, and the viewer becomes captivated immediately by the action. You know, so many special guests have been in this studio today, and we're about to introduce another one. We teased the name earlier on. Stuart just teased it again now. I can only call this man a living legend, and even that doesn't suffice, does it? Doesn't describe the aura of this individual, the producer of Quintet, the Gracie Hunter, the Hall of Famer, the man, the myth, the one and only Kazushi Sakuraba joins us in studio now. Sakuraba-san, welcome. It is great to have you here. I, I'm just honored to be in your presence. Welcome, thank you very much for joining us. Could you give a word to your fans, Sakuraba-san? Uh, my name is Sakuraba. <laughs> I can't understand because you guys are speaking English. I've, I've kind of forgotten what I wanted to say. Uh, I'll be a little bit more serious. Uh, hello, this is me, Sakuraba. It's been about five years since the last time we were able to do Quintet. Thanks to you, we are able to do this again. As far as the number series is concerned, we're getting a bunch of uh, grapplers from around the world, and they're all very high level, and it's going to be a lot of fun. There's many people that have come to the world of grappling and jiu-jitsu and many high-level uh, fighters and grapplers are going to be coming to this next numbered quintet, number four. So please look forward to it. Thank you very much. Quintet four is going to be grappling madness. How about these teams? Team Sakuraba will be led by the legend Sakuraba. Team 10th Planet will be led by Eddie Bravo. Team Polaris will be led by Gregor Gracie. And the man himself, John Danaher, is behind Team New Wave. It's a dream team of dream teams with the strongest grapplers on the planet in this incredible lineup. Sakuraba san, tell me more about Team Sakuraba. My team is. My name is Sakuraba. <laughs> <laughs> I can speak in Japanese, right? Uh, Haisam has been gone for a while, but he's I'm really looking forward to seeing him grapple. He's been practicing in the US and he's gotten really strong. So we're looking forward to that. Uh, there's also Tomoshige Sera from Carpe Diem and Daisuke Nakamura. They're both really aggressive. 
めちゃくちゃいいんで、あのあの試合も面白いんで、行けますよ、今回は優勝いけますよ、で僕もなんかこう、なんか頑張りますけど、あと一人は今、探してます。Sakuraba-san, your son Taisei also making his quintet debut on September 10. He faces a very strong opponent, Masato Uchishiba. Uchishiba won back to back gold in the 66 kilo judo weight class at both the Athens and Beijing Olympics. How do you feel about Taisei in this single super match against this incredible Olympian? It's really up to him. I'm not really necessarily rooting for him. But、uh, as far as Judo is concerned, he can't beat Uchishiba. But the rules are a bit different, so、uh, I think he has a chance. And that's why we put him in this match. So I think we have to kind of leave it up to him. This isn't Judo, this is professional grappling. And Taisei is coming in with the Sakuraba DNA. You can't train for that, Michael. You can't buy that, Michael. It's two different things. September 10, Yokohama Arena. Taisei Sakuraba takes on the family tradition in his debut and squares off against Masato Uchishiba. Let's have him join us now. Please welcome to the stage. Taisei Sakuraba, please, Taisei, join us. Please take a seat. It's a family affair, please, thank you. Taisei, please grab the microphone and give a big message to all of your fans around the world. Hello, I'm Sakuraba Taisei. Thank you. On September 10, Taisei, you make your first appearance at Quintet. What emotions are you feeling right now about your Quintet debut on what will be a show that is going to make history and have the eyes of the entire world watching? Well, I haven't really received so much attention up until now, but I'm really happy, actually. I really like people to notice me, so it's, it's nice. And I'm working really hard. Taisei, I also want to ask about your opponent, Uchishiba. You're obviously studying him very carefully. What do you know about him, and how do you feel the match will go against Uchishiba? He's really macho. Or at least that's what his image is. So I'm not going to try to fight him with strength. Or at least that's not my plan. Sakuraba-san, you've done so many of these press conferences for such a long time, but here you are sitting next to your own son for the very first time in this historic announcement. What are you feeling right now, and what message would you like to give Taisei leading towards September 10? I don't really have a message. Other than doing the best, but now that you're professional, don't try to only make yourself happy. Make sure your fans are happy with the results. So, I want you to think about that. Taisei, it must be amazing to be sitting next to your father here. How do you feel after those comments from him and, you know, father and son, a new generation? From my perspective, he's just my normal dad. I've never thought of him as amazing, but seeing him here, I realized that he regularly appears in places like this. And that's fairly impressive to me. Well, it looks like you've got a very special message from Uchishiba himself. Taisei's opponent, let's take a look right now at Uchishiba. 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 Let's take a look right now Taisei, 
私も道場を作って3ヶ月、えー、子供たちが試合に勝ってくれているのでそれに続いて、えー、自分も勝ちたいなという気持ちでいます、えー、大勢選手、えー、ぜひいい試合をしましょうよろしくお願いします Them's fighting words from Uchi Shiba saying he doesn't believe Tai Sei can keep up with him. Tai Sei, what do you have to say after hearing that statement from Uchi Shiba? When I was a、uh, middle schooler, I used to watch the videos of Uchi Shiba. And there's no way that I can really beat him in judo. But、uh, I'm really looking forward to facing him. Folks, it's been an historic day, and the special guests continue to enter the studio here in Tokyo. I'm excited again for this next guest. Joining us, the new supervisor overseeing the operations at Quintet. Let's have him come on stage now. He's a king of the ring. It's the one and only Mr. Akira Maeda. Talk about a gathering of legends. Maeda san, Sakuraba san, as Maeda san takes a seat. Mr. Maeda, it is such a thrill to be here with you on this historic occasion of this announcement. Could you please give a word or two to our viewers watching right around the world? Hey, you know, what you are doing now, Sakuraba. It's really the experience we had 30 years ago when we started rings. When there were no rules for mixed martial arts. When we developed the rules, trained fighters. When we created a world network. It was the worldwide predecessor to MMA. When we started that competition, we put the foundation up and struggled so hard. It's what Sakuraba is doing right now. A sport that is entirely grappling might be easy to understand for someone who is familiar. But what do you do for people who don't know that much about it? In order to get a lot more viewers, to be able to enjoy it, in order to make this a sport, you've got to think about what's necessary. And you've got to also find really appealing fighters. And people we haven't found yet. I want to use my worldwide network and grab the most famous fighters. Before coming here today, I talked to a guy who worked very hard during his time in the rings. His name is Wolfgang Han. And he lives in Switzerland. Well, I contacted him if I need to. But he told me there's. A guy that he knows, who's a champion class wrestler, who won a grappling tournament. We can call him someone like Kopirov. There's also Combat Sambo from Russia. I think it'd be a good idea if we could get some fighters from Combat Sambo. But because of the situation in Ukraine. There are problems getting visas. Right? I don't believe there are borders. So I'd like to ask various politicians to see if they can push because this is for sports. At least I'd like to try. Thank you, Mr. Maeda. We're very excited to see Tai Sei make his debut on September 10. What are your thoughts on Tai Sei and what he will bring to Quintet? At the Yokohama Arena on September 10. That boy was raised by the famous Kazushi Sakuraba. I can't tell you how much I look forward to seeing what this kid can do. Well, Mr. Maeda, you are the father of UWF. 
Universal Wrestling Federation, credited as the roots of mixed martial arts, which is where Mr. Sakuraba made his debut, of course, in UWF International. And you've gone from there to the ultimate grappling competition, Quintet. After so many years, what do you think about your original role in the UWF? At the time, out of all the sports and fighting, professional wrestling had a tremendously high status. It was popular and widely recognized. My start line was in professional wrestling. But all of us wanted very much for it to be the real thing. We aimed to be competent. And capable of competing for real. So we began to refine our skills and crystallize them into an all-around fighting style. So I was asked by a reporter what UWF's goal was. And what I said was. We can do punches, we can do kicks, we can even do a mix of throws, submissions from joint locks. So in that sense, what we are doing is an all-around martial arts. Because we are doing it with our hands, 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 it was a way for us to show all of those fans, the people who were focused on Japanese wrestling, and within the framework of competitive sports, it was a way for us to inform them about the techniques of MMA. We were teaching them. In a way, I think we were teaching our fans. Sakuraba-san, what are your memories of your time at UWF? And did you ever think, way back then, that you would be here today, sitting next to your son and preparing for Quintet 4? I used to love UWF. And Maeda-san was right in the middle of it. Maeda-san, so, thank you for being our supervisor. And sorry, but I'm the UWF members. The people I liked were Fujiwara-san and Kido-san. Well, I liked your kick, Maeda-san. I guess I liked your joint locks, too. So, well... You know a lot about joint locks, right? I'd be really happy if you taught me some. I don't need to learn your high kicks. I loved UWF. <laughs> Sakuraba-san, it's, 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 it's history. It is history just seeing these two men being a part of this event on September 10 and being here today as part of this announcement. In order to accomplish a full restart, the pinnacle of grappling sports quintet also has plans for a global expansion after September 2023. Let's take a look now at a brief summary of the details. Quintet is being relaunched and plans to expand their operation just like K1 with a World Grand Prix concept. In 2024, in collaboration with K1, Quintet also plans to hold regional qualifiers alongside K1 in jointly held events. The top teams that make it through the fierce competition will compete in a final tournament to determine the top grappling team in the world. With the large number of people competing in the sport and the rapid worldwide development of grappling, this team competition is sure to be the most jaw-dropping event yet. The exciting battle unfolds, proving once and for all that Quintet is the universal sport. It looks like there are many things in the works for Quintet for 2024 and beyond. 
Sakuraba-san, what are your thoughts looking towards the next year? Well, there are many wonderful grapplers around the world, and we want people to know that, to learn about them, and to realize how fun grappling is. And Mr. Maeda, what are your thoughts going forward for Quintet and its global expansion next year? This is a sport with tremendous potential. My hope is that we can create ties with the Japan Judo Federation so that we can use Judoka from around the world. I think it would make the sport tremendously fun. This sport is based on Judo in many ways. And if possible, we should have perhaps an Olympic event that's based on Quintet, which only uses submissions. I mean, you could call it Quintet or something else. I think that that would be a great idea to have something like that. Imagine heats of regional events building to national events, and you have teams from various countries all battling their way through to the best in the world. I mean, what's more accessible than viewers all around the world watching this format with no knowledge of the sport, but getting behind their national team on the world stage? It's almost like the World Cup of grappling, isn't it? It is. Incredible, absolutely incredible. Well, finally, We'll leave you with an overview of Reboot, K1 and Quintet's kickoff events. Once again at the Yokohama Arena, history will be made on September 10. And let's introduce our platforms for broadcast and distribution. On September 10th, Reboot takes place at the Yokohama Arena. Please note that both K1 and Quintet have different ticket sales and starting times. Because both events will be held at the same venue, Please understand there may be some changes in the schedule for the second half. Advanced ticket sales for K1 and Quintet start July 18th from 6 p.m. Get your tickets from Ticketpia. For more information, please check the official homepage. K1 will be distributed and broadcast from the platforms and broadcasters shown here. Please check the details of Quintet, including which services are available outside of Japan on our official homepage. All information about broadcasting will be announced on the official websites of each distribution service. K1 and Quintet are about to be reborn, becoming truly worldwide content once again. Lastly, Carlos, Mr. Sakuraba, Mr. Maeda, let's talk about your thoughts about the future of these franchises. Carlos, there's a lot to be excited about as the new producer of K1. What are your thoughts as we move towards September 10 and beyond? Um, uh, well, the, from Japan to the world, that is our watch award. Thank you. Mr. Sakuraba, from Japan to the world and beyond, your final thoughts on September 10 and next year. Yeah, yeah, you know, I'm still competing, so... Grappling is... very exciting, and I want everyone to see the kind of matches that I can do and the excitement of that. And when more people see those, I think more people start to do grappling and watch. And Mr. Maeda, what are your thoughts as supervisor of Quintet? going forward. I want more people to know how fascinating Quintet is, how we can spread interest in this thing. It goes the same to Quintet, but also with amateur events, to have everyone from kids to middle schoolers high schoolers, college students, and adults. I think we should have more events like that. So that people can grasp how fun Quintet is. 
、えー、視聴者ばりになって。えー、なおかつ、えー、その子たちをまた中心にして、その人たち、その子たちを中心にしてです、ね、またこうファン層が広がっていくっていうことですね。であとなんかあの、えー、ちょっとした動きの中で一瞬で決まってしまった、決まるはずが決まらなかったっていうのをうこうリプレイで,です、ね、技の解説みたいな感じで、ね、各所に入りながら、やるとまたそれはそれで面白いかなと思ったりしますね。以上です。Striking or grappling, no matter your preference, one thing's for certain excitement abounds as both K1 and Quintet begin anew. And like the Phoenix, they experience rebirth, hitting their organizational restart buttons this fall. You will not want to miss out on our broadcast as both franchises reboot, showcasing the best. Of both the worlds of striking and grappling entertainment have to offer. So be sure to stay tuned. We invite you to stay connected as we continue to update you with new information as soon as it becomes available. So please continue to keep a lookout. That does it for now. It's been an historic day. I'm your host, The Voice, Michael Chevallo, and I'll see you at the Yokohama Arena. September 10, here in Tokyo, Japan, where we're going to reborn the whole world. It is going to be explosive. Until next time, stay strong.